We're here with uh, Mr. Jesse Itzler. Um, his resume is, is pretty long, not his, uh, not his paper resume, his life resume. Uh, and we're going to do something a little interesting today. We're just going to do a quick 20 minute session, uh, 10 minutes of me, you know, throwing some, some zingers at him and, and he's going to throw some zingers back at me, but just trying to have some fun, trying to, you know, spread some, some knowledge, some energy to other entrepreneurs out there that might find this content really useful. Um, I'm Josh Goodman. I'm the owner, founder, and CEO of Pour My Beer, a beverage agnostic company. Uh, I don't want to say based out of Chicago because our team's all over the country. Um, and uh, Jesse was nice enough to have me in his house today, so thank you, sir. Absolutely. Um, and I don't know if you wanted to get, give a quick intro, like, uh, again, you're a humble dude, so I know you don't like to throw down like everything, but maybe like three quick things that, that, that the people that have not met you might want to know. First of all, thanks for coming and made it an easy commute today at my house, so thank you for that. No, I'm a serial entrepreneur, a uh, very unconventional journey. I've been in the music business, the beverage business, the private aviation business, um, and um, I guess the common theme for my journey has been I had no prior experience in any of that stuff. I kind of figured it out as I went and had some success. We had a company called Zico Coconut Water, which we sold to Coke, a uh, private jet company called Marquee Jet, which we sold to Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway's Net Jets. Um, a music company we sold to a public company so and also had a lot of egg on my face along the way so it's been a, it's been a pretty interesting journey nice now, if you have not consumed Jesse's content highly encourage you to uh, that's been a big part of my journey in taking our company from a hundred grand in debt to coca-cola buying 25 percent of it so uh, just huge thanks to start off with the content you put out there it's just really really powerful stuff in the books the books are amazing thank you you're 30 years old would you rather be able to shoot a three like Trey Young or run an endurance race like Chad Wright? Wow. <laughs> That's a good one, man. Um, <laughs> Trey Young gets more eyeballs than Chad Wright. I, I would say if I was 30 years old, I'd rather shoot like Trey. All right, fair enough. No, no, uh, no shame on Chad. At that 53, dude. I'd rather run like Chad. Okay, yeah. That's, that's why I said 30. Um, would you rather run 50 miles or bike 250? Meaning what's harder? Yeah. Oh, I'd much rather run 50. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay. I just did a 150 miles last weekend for the MS, and that was, yeah, that was kind of in a euphoric stage. Um, ride, you said riding 250? Yeah, riding a bike 250 miles. It's gonna, that would take me 14 hours probably. Really? What do you think? Well, it took me about eight hours, eight and a half hours to do 150. Yeah, so, so yeah. that's right. Yeah. So, and the 50 miler would take me about probably 10. Okay. So I would take, I would take that. Okay. That's a long time on the saddle. The bike yeah, yeah, I was, I felt that because we did 75 on Saturday and 75 on Sunday. So yeah. That doesn't count. And yeah, no, That doesn't that's, count. That's you remember your trip to Poland with Wim Hof? Uh, would you rather have to sleep in the bathroom after Steve Weatherford blew it up or climb Mount Washington again? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I go to Washington any day. Weatherford, you can't sleep next to Steve Weatherford in like the same room unless you have a full oxygen mask on. <laughs> yeah. There's I've, not a lot of stuff I wouldn't do well, than follow I, you know, Weatherford. I've never bathroom. met Steve. Seems like an awesome dude, but the, he posted like a video where he was, I guess, interviewing you after you came out of the bathroom. And <laughs> well, we went, we stayed at Wim's house in a small cabin in um, the Czech Republic. No, we were, in, we were in Poland, and uh, there were like five guys in one room, and I was, I was bunked up. Steve was one of the guys in my room, and the bathroom that everybody shared, a house of like 20 people, was downstairs. So it, it was cold. Most people didn't want to go downstairs. So unless you really had to go, anything less than full bathroom run, you would just take care of it in the room. So Steve was not the guy you wanted to, you know, <laughs> sit with in that situation. So have you ever heard the name Jay Abraham? No. So he's like, uh, I guess, um, Damon John. So Damon John, I guess, uh, he's one of his coaches. And uh, I guess Tony Robbins, Jay Abraham is one of his coaches. Well, I met him at an event, and I thought it was he, – he, someone asked him. It was like a little 20-person entrepreneur event put on by a friend of mine, Steve Sims. 
Um, actually, funny enough, Steve has had a similar career to yours where you just kind of used to make magic happen. Like Steve's where you got, the Australian guy? Uh, English. English, yeah. Yeah, really sharp dude, like awesome guy. Um, you know him or have he, you him? Did he write a book? Uh, Blue Fishing. Yeah, Blue Fishing. Yeah. I love that book. Yeah, yeah. He's, yeah, he's a cool guy. So he's got these events where like it's invite only for like 20 entrepreneurs and you don't know what the hell's going to happen. He just show up at this address and then these random people come in. So like he had Ken Cragen who was the guy that did We Are the World and Hands Across America, like just really, really cool stuff. But uh, one of the things he said, um, someone asked him, what's the most successful business you did? And he, the, it, was, it was nothing I would have expected. He said, I found uh, a mar- uh, in this business, it was an investor's da- business daily where he brokered a deal where he could put inserts in there for like, I don't know, 20 bucks a piece or something like that. And then he, you know, they agreed to it. And then he went back to the people that were paying full page ads and said, I'll give you your full page ads for half what you're paying and it'll be an insert. And he was able to do that for a few years, making millions of dollars for literally just that arbitrage. And I'm curious, you know, people know of some of the bigger wins that you've had, you know, that you just referenced, but are, are, there, uh, are there other wins that people aren't aware of that, you know, maybe that uh, didn't take as much effort, but just being able to find that pattern and capitalize on it? The biggest wins for me probably were not financial, but were things that gave me credibility or sped up the process of being an entrepreneur. So like I wrote a song for the Knicks, which most people that know me know, but I lost probably $1,000 on the trade. It cost me, the Knicks paid me four grand to do it. So I, they, that was my fee. I invoiced them for four. It cost me about $4,800 to do it because I had to pay the studio and the engineer or whatever. But I would have paid the Knicks 20 because then I had the credibility to go to other teams and said I did the Nick song and, and other businesses or whatever. So some of the wins were not financial, but they, they set they the set tone. Yeah, yeah, they, they set gave you that credibility. Yeah. Knowing what you knew now and the connections that you have, would 53-year-old Jesse have done better at scaling and selling Marquee and Zika than Jesse at those ages? A hundred percent, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think I didn't know what I was doing when I was in my 30s. These, this, those deals happened in my 30s. Marky Jet, I was 30s, I don't even remember, 38, 39, something like that. Um, yeah, I mean, you just, the more you experience, the more you have to offer and the more you can, you know, pull from. Um, but I will say this, even if you're really young, you're young, how old are you? 42. Okay. How old were you when you started the company? Officially, like 31, 32. Right. So, but you have access to mentors, lawyers, resources. So even though I was young when I started, when I was in my 20s, I used my youth as, my youth as an excuse. I made a mistake. I'm young. And then one day I was like, stop making excuses, making mistakes, and blaming it on your lack of experience. Like, <laughs> you, you're in business. You can't have excuses, right. you know? And then I started going to people that knew the answers to things that I didn't. So I knew what position I liked to play and I was good at, but when you don't, you have to go and find people that can, you know, handle your weaknesses. So a young now, if I went back and I was 30 and, and I look back on my journey, I had amazing mentors, I had amazing advisors, and, um, and now I don't need that as much because I've learned along the way. And now I can give that advice to other people in their 30s, but that's the cycle. All right. I was just curious if some of the, the entrepreneurship, I guess, ignorance that I had at a younger age is what got me through those early days, if that would have... The difference is when I was young, there were no consequences. Right. So I didn't care. I would stay up. I would wait in a room for 11 hours for someone to walk through the door if I wanted to meet them. I would do anything to get where I wanted to go. Kind of an interesting thought question. Like if you were born in 1920 versus when you were born... And there wasn't rap music, and there wasn't you know break dancing. What do you think you'd have ended up kind of getting into? Or what, what, where, and is that is that like prohibition? Was that the prohibition era? I think so, because my grandmother was born eighteen eighteen. So I would have been good at that era, <laughs> smuggling <laughs> shit. Um, uh, if I was born in the in the twenties, I think I still would have. I never, if my DNA was the same as it is now. I never wanted to work for anybody, so I've never had a resume. I've never worked, right. like really worked. I mean, I've had odds and end right. jobs. So I, I think I still would have figured out a way to sell a widget. Okay. In the Living with the Monks book, you said you gave up watching football because you estimated it was going to be 38,000 more hours, I think, in your life. Um, how much 
money do you think that saved you by not watching that too? Because I can't imagine you were just watching the sport for the enjoyment of the sport. Uh, maybe you were. I don't oh, know. you mean like gambling? <laughs> oh, I would say probably. I'd say probably eighteen million. <laughs> I don't know. No, no, I thought, you know, because when I said that, I was like, because my father-in-law, he's always like, I don't watch the game because of the game. Like, I, it's got to, you know. You got a little something on it. Um, but I don't know. That might be. I, did, I, I know as an NBA owner, like, it's probably not the Yeah, I mean, topic, those days but, are done for me. Yes. The younger me definitely had that that. Drug. For those of the pe- those that are listening that don't know about the $320,000 Yankees tickets or the the uh, you know the the, the muffins um, you know or the what was that there's another one with the Matt Damon story with Coca Cola I guess I don't uh, I heard about that one um, can you retell one of those uh, just that you want to tell or maybe one I, that I've never heard um, that worked out well and then tell one that w- did not work out well um, but you can kind of look back and laugh at it no I mean I have a lot of stories of when I was starting out that just were were. When you start out in business, even when you're not starting out, you have to think about how do you differentiate yourself from everybody else. Not just your products, you in meetings, how you present yourself, your advertising, everything. There's, again, if I'm gonna sell this widget, there's a thousand people selling it, you know? So like, how do you make yourself different? And I've always invested a lot of time thinking about that. I find that part of the fun of business. Like, how do you, you know, how do you really differentiate yourself? And I just remember, I mean, I told this story recently, I've only shared it once, but when I was in the final inning of Coca-Cola, doing a deal with Coke on my coconut water, this is pre, before we even hooked up with, and with Zico, um, I had a, a, a thing called Coco Plus, which is this, what I was trying to get off the ground. Anyway, I'm in a meeting with the powers that be at Coke, and we're in like the ninth inning, and they're in all these guys from, come in from Atlanta with suits to my office and we're going to figure out if we're going to make a deal or whatever it was and I got to get them over the edge so I called up I knew that these guys were baseball fans so I called up A-Rod and I said um, I'm working on this deal do you would you want some shares of a coconut water company at the you know ground floor I don't know if it's going to happen or not but if it happens I will give you shares at the ground I was like well what do you need me to do I said well come to my office at 430 the elevator door is going to open up. I'm going to be in a room with all these guys. Just knock on the glass, and I'm going to tell them I, I can't. I'll call you back in an hour. Get back in the elevator and leave. He's like, "All right." So 4:30, I'm in the meeting with all these guys in suits. The elevator opens up. A Rod comes out with like three guys. He knocks on the glass, and I'm like, "Rod, I messed up, man. I'll call you back in like an hour." He's like, "Cool," and he gets back in the elevator and he leaves. And the guys from the Coke are like. Was what do you who was that? Like that's Alex Rodriguez, and I'm like I know I forgot. He's got a whole thing with him and some of the other Yankees tonight. And anyway, whatever. What were you guys saying about? And they were like, and that flipped the whole thing. So I was always doing things like that. Like you said, I flew to Europe, but I didn't have a meeting. Right. I was just creating magic when you know nah, when I wasn't there. How did you like once that happened? Did you just kind of pretend like that didn't happen, and then you just knew that you had the room, or like how did? I just, yeah, I just knew, I just wanted to, listen, let the guys know yeah. that, that, that there's some magic in the, in, in the pitching arm still. Well, and because you built the foundation of relationships throughout your whole career, like that's not like a, you can just randomly call up A-Rod and be like, I'll give you some shares. Of, you know, no, of course, of course. Yeah. And listen, that's an outrageous example. I don't expect everybody yeah. <laughs> to be able to call someone and, you know, pull a sting operation in a meeting, but, but. The point of it is, is how do you stand out? Right. And if it wasn't that, and if you said no, I would have figured out another way to, to, to do something or another story I could have shared or something that would make the people in the room say, I want to do business with that guy. Because most of the time, people are buying into the relationships. Coke didn't write you a check because they love their product. They believed in you. You're a small company. I mean, no disrespect. You, you, you're in the first inning of what it could be. Yeah. That's what I mean by small. There's a lot of growth. Coke didn't bet. They, they're betting on you. You know, um, so you have to you have to establish that. However, you establish that in most of the meetings. Yeah, no, it's fair point. I'm sure as an idea guy, you always have big ideas, or you have them randomly and you write them down or something. Um, so m- one of my big ideas uh, back in 2012 was, what if you could get celebrities to talk to you know regular people that would pay to talk to them, like through like either a phone or a video. And this was before Zoom or any of that. So. It just, I never really saw it through. And then I saw, uh, actually I was in the incubator in Chicago with Cameo 
and I, I had dinner with the CEO and I was like, that's an awesome idea. I had it. Here's my business plan. I never ran with it, but kudos to you. Do you have any of those where like maybe you had an idea and you never really kind of went after it and then you saw someone else crush it? Uh, yeah, I got to think about it because I say it, it happens to me all the time. I'm like, oh my God, I had that idea. But I think, you know, there's a big, a lot of people probably said they had the idea about Spanx or about Marquee Jet or anything, but it's about doing execution, it in execution. Yeah. Um, I had this crazy idea for bars to eliminate bartenders with this touchscreen technology. But, um, Sounds like a scam. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Scam. In Austria, when I inked the deal with my business partner there, um, we did kind of a celebratory like ski trip on in Flakau, and I'd never been to you know the, the Alps. I grew up in like rural Virginia, like that was the furthest thing from my, my mind. And we had an amazing time. had some had some beverages afterwards, uh, and then I was like, I'm gonna walk home. And I instead of taking the road, I took a field. I ended up kind of falling in a ditch and almost dying in like a ravine. Um, and like I got out of the ditch and uh, like fell asleep for a little while and then I realized like I can't sleep in the snow so I, I walked back all that to say I almost I felt like I almost died I felt like it was like a wake-up moment for me have you had a almost died moment or a wake-up moment in your life or you know something that you consider pivotal yeah but not not out of uh, not out of like a st stupidity not, okay, yeah, like, not, not out of like I drank too much <laughs> or I did something stupid I've had close calls and other things, um, near misses in cars, near misses in this and that. I don't, and those are always wake up calls, but I also don't feel like I need a tragedy to make me to make, make changes. I'm super aware of my own mortality and like where, where I am in my journey. And so I live every day like that could happen at any moment. I truly do. But when something like that does happen, and usually you have something like that every year, there's like one thing like, whoa, that car just whizzed by me, I forgot, thank God I looked, it soared out of the corner of my eye. Right. It always does make you think about, now with kids, yeah. you have kids too, yeah. right? The 12 and a nine year old. Right, so the, the, that um, awareness and worry shifts, because now like, you know, like, yeah, you're, you want to be there for them. You want to be there for them, but it shifts to like, what are they doing? Are they going to fall in a ditch? Are they going right. to... Yeah. So it's like, you know, it's just triple the energy. Which album have you listened to more, Liquid Swords or Chronic 2001? Oh, Chronic. Really? Yeah. Not a woo? I am, but... Okay. Yeah. Um, could, you get, could you go through the whole album and like hit every single word? I could go through... Those, see, that... Those... That's a little late in my journey. If you went like late 80s to mid 90s, I could go through almost every like LLs album. early? Though. All of it. Yeah, still by luck. heart. Can you do that like right now? Yeah. That's <laughs> even, even that. I don't, that was not his first album. Was that his first album? Okay, my, my, Bigger and Deffer? Yeah. Yeah, like all the early L, I'm Bad, Radio, all that. Yeah, word for word. Nice. Or just to preface this, in your early years, you said you did some couch surfing. Um, where you did, you know, spent like, was it 18, was it 18 months or something? 18 like? different friend couches. 18 different friends, yeah. So those 18 friends, have you ever had kind of like a gathering where you're like, thank you, <laughs> and like you've just celebrated like that they were there for you when, you know, you needed them? I usually, so you're referring to like when I was between the ages of like 20 to 23, 19 to 23, I was just trying to make, figure out what I was going to do, and um, my parents had moved down to Florida, I was living in New York and LA and bouncing around and I didn't have an apartment so I was just going couch to couch to couch to couch. And my friends would let me stay there forever and I was literally, it was like check to check. It was like if I could, it was, I had an eat what you kill mentality and entrepreneurship like looking for the next deal or something. And um, we still laugh about it. Like we're, a lot of times we're out, I'm like, I slept on your couch. You're like you slept on my couch too. And my couch. <laughs> I mean it's, it's um, but I should do that. I should do that. No. But you know, man, that those years, like when I was doing that, I was probably just as happy as I am now. It, it didn't impact. Right. Like you I were, was still loving the whole experience. Where's this going to take journey, me to? Yeah. And now but, that once you land on a destination, it becomes different. You want to stay where you are in in your positioning. You want to get better. It's a it's a different. It's different. Yeah. It's different. And I don't know. One's not better than the other. It's just it's just different. 
No, I mean, it's, it's, it's a testament to the type of person you are that none of your friends are like, dude, get the hell off my couch. Or, or, were young, or yeah. you know, like they, or their girlfriends or whatever. Like, get, I was get fun, Jesse to leave. Man. I was you know? fun. Like, I would do anything. So, yeah. like, who wouldn't want to have a guy that would do anything and anytime? The New York Knicks uh, thing probably got you, you know, a lot of yeah, in front of the line type access as well. So, that, did. I'm sure that was nice. I'll yeah. ask you just off the top of my head if someone wired you $10 million tomorrow, what would you do? What would you do with the money? I would want to prove out some of these uh, like stadium concepts. Event no, not for your business, personally. Oh, me like, personally. You sell your company for $10 I, million. No, I, well, I'd still, I, I don't feel like I've completed the journey, you know. Like the money is not the, the, the end goal. And actually, that was a question I was going to ask you too. But the, just like, I don't feel like I've completed this, this, this book. You know what I mean? Like, um, so it's, I don't think it would change. Well, let me back it up. Someone wired you $50 million, okay. what would you do? Uh, yeah, I, I think I would I would take some time to do some amazing trips. Uh, like, you know, um, I, I'm, I've never been to Australia, never been to South America, never been to Asia. Uh, I'd like to do it with my family because I can't just go there, you know, um, without them. Probably be, you know, having that extra time, I would, I would be more focused on, like, their sports as far as, like, being coaching and doing things like that. But it's, you know, it's tough to balance that with, you know, with, uh, I guess, the, the business making sure it continues to grow. Um, but yeah, that's, I mean, for me, it's just, it's about experiences, you know, just, um, and also like, I, like before this meeting, I got like a few people hit me up on uh, LinkedIn, some entrepreneurs like 10 years before me, and they're looking at me like, oh, you know, I'm trying to do what you did, blah, blah, blah. And, and I've, I've just, I find joy out of helping, you know, people at that stage and trying to give them little tips, you know, so that's, I think I'd lean into that a little bit more, like, you know, helping, uh, you know, grittier kind of early stage entrepreneurs uh, get past that hump, you know? How would you define success? <clears throat> Everybody uh, has a different definition. How would you define it? I, I'm going to revert back to the Maya Angelou um, quote, you know, uh, people forget what you say, they forget what you do, but they remember how you made them feel. I would focus heavily on that side of my life, like like being able to kind of ask myself after I interact with someone, how, how did I make that person feel? What energy did, did they, were, was able to give them or help them in some way? Um, so for me, it's helping as many people that I interact with, even just at the coffee shop. I mean, when Aiden and I were picking up our car, I had like a 10 minute conversation with the guy running the car and he really loved phones. And, you know, it's just fun to connect with people, you know? So um, I, I define success in that way. I feel like if you can continue to just help people that maybe aren't where you're at, but want to be, have that drive, have that ambition, um, it, 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 it's karma, it just it all works out. Would you rather go to a Rolling Stones concert or a Run DMC concert? Run. It's like the last year of the Rolling Stones. This is like the last chance to see one of the most Well, legendary. that's the thing, it's like, do you want to see them in their prime or you want to see them in the last, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, don't know. I, I, I grew up in, I was in high, high school in the 90s, so I mean, I was right. a little bit past you, but yeah, it was yeah, yeah, still yeah. enough to, you know, how's your diet, by the way? It's it's uh, it's off and on, um, but I you know that's one of the, I, I do the athletic greens every morning and I try to fast or not try I fast until lunch, um, and then I, I've been doing like every Tuesday a 36 hour fast, but I've lost about 15 20 pounds in the last uh, since July. We moved our whole family from Chicago to you know, Pennsylvania. So 36 hours water only or 36 hours. I'll do coffee. I know that's not a true fast, but I'm like that and bone broth. But even bone broth, I guess, breaks the fast, doesn't it? Or no? Yeah, because it just changes your sugar levels. So it's like you want to. But yeah, I mean, it's better than. There's levels to it, right? Right. So I, I need to, I need I need to take that next step and like do full on like just just water because that's something that you've been really yeah. focused on, right? I fell off it a little bit. I, I was on it for like six six months. I loved it, and then I started training for this run. I was putting in a lot of miles, and I didn't want to. I was running, I could run like 10 miles on a fast, no problem. Uh, but when I start, if you start getting up to like 20, 30 miles at a time and you're on a fast for me, it just, that's hard. Not, it's just, Do you why? just feel like dead at the end or is it? Um, I just feel like, you just like, you can bonk. You know, like, again, I, that's not what I was training for. I, I train depleted a lot, like I'll run fasted, I ran today, I, I haven't eaten yet today, I, well I just ate, but I, prior to the run I didn't eat, but um, I like to train depleted, but if I'm going like 5 to 8 miles, if I'm going 20 miles, 
and I'm going to be out there. 20 miles for me is three or four hours. Right. It's I need. I, I would want to bring something. I will, I could run a marathon with nothing, but if I'm going to go start and that that starts at seven in the morning, that's different. If you start running at two or three in the afternoon, you haven't eaten in 20 right. hours or something. So yeah. Nah, anyway, a, yeah. I, I I definitely noticed when I hit like. Before the race, I, I ate some pizza and stuff because someone was like, "Oh, you should do some carb loading before." And I just felt lethargic, like because I don't, I try not to eat that many carbs, just because. Yeah, know. because the, as soon as you eat, you go into your digestion mode. That requires a lot of energy. Yeah. So like, you, you know, you're better off eating nothing before an early marathon than a pizza. The night before, you mean? No, because that gives you enough time. Well, that's but what if I was saying. Before gonna go, the, yeah. the night before, I I went and had some pizza with myself. Yeah, that's that. that yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your prediction? Is this a, a billion dollar company down the road? What do you think? I mean, just the, the basic concept. Um, well, I mean, I think it's, it's different, it's interesting. I think it's got a lot of potential and I would never bet against something that you're involved with and Coke is involved with. So that's, I don't know how big it's gonna be, but All that's right. up to you. Thank you for joining us and uh, yeah, this has been fun. So hopefully you follow Jesse, uh, Jesse, at, at, at Jesse Itzler. At Jesse Itzler. And BYLR.com. Yeah. Yeah. At Jesse Itzler and my company at uh, Build Your Life Resume, yep. But just, I appreciate it. All right, cool. Yeah, man, (laughs) cool.